Hey everyone, we are joined today by Steve Green and I would like him to uh, introduce himself. Steve, uh, welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Um, as you know, I'm running for the resident circuit judge for the first judicial circuit, Williamson County. So tell us about Steve Green. Who are you? Well, I'm an attorney that practices in Marion. I've been practicing for 29 years. Uh, I have a family of four children. I've been married to Terry for uh, 17 years and she and I live uh, in Marion. And tell me why you decided to run for judge. Well, over the years of my practice, as time progressed, some of my colleagues had suggested they thought that I might make a good judge. Mm -hmm. um, this position opened up, and when it did, I considered it, talked it over with my family, talked it over with my friends, and prayerfully considered it, and I think I had the extensive experience necessary for this position. So go into more of that. What, what requirements do you think you specifically have to, to run for and become a resident judge? My legal experience is uh, quite a number of years, 29. I have done almost every kind of case that is going to go in front of a judge in Williamson County. Not just one or two times, but multiple times. I have also been appointed by the court to act as a mediator in civil cases, and I've done that for 17 years. Um, those experiences and my life experiences that I've had, I think, makes me uniquely qualified for this position. Now, obviously, integrity and ethical conduct key to this position, so how do you hold yourself accountable? Well, Kevin, um, over the years of my practice, I think that I've developed a very good working relationship with the attorneys in the area, and the judges, and they have all expressed to me that they trust and uh, think that I have that kind of integrity. Additionally, I've represented a number of clients for a long time. I'm the attorney for the city of Marion for 10 years. They have trust my representation and my integrity that period of time. Williamson County Housing Authority, the same thing is true. I've represented a number of school districts for over 25 years. Mm. And I think that those things speak of the level of trust that those entities have placed in me. And uh, I believe that my word is my bond, and I think I'm known for that. In your view, what are some specific issues that would face judges in the first judicial circuit? You know, Kevin, unfortunately in our area, drugs is a serious issue. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but uh, there are a number of cases that we see on a day-to-day -day basis that deals with the abuse and neglect of children. These things ex certainly uh, impact the lives of individuals for a long period of time. And um, those things are what we deal with every day. And so, uh, you know, as a judge, you'll be dealing with both criminal and civil cases yes. and issues. So how does your legal background kind of get you prepared and experienced for this job? Oh, Kevin, I've tried cases in both criminal court, both in federal state court. I've done civil cases, both federal and state court. Um, I, like I've indicated, I've, I've done just about any kind of case over the period of time. And like I said, not just one or two times, but I have experience with them. Um, I bring to the table the ability to act as a neutral because of my mediation background. I understand that individuals need a neutral to be able to listen to both sides of the issue, try to help them work out a resolution that uh, helps them avoid going to court. So let's talk more about impartiality and, and tell me an example of how judges uh, rule impartially. Well, a judge is supposed to listen to both sides of the case. Everybody has a side. And then the judge is not to act as a partisan for one side or the other. M much like what I've done in mediation. You listen to both sides. You try to work for some sort of common resolution that they both would be able to accept. You don't take one side or the other side. Mm -hmm. You listen to individuals and you make sure that they feel like they've been heard. And talk to me a little bit about the role that a judge plays when it comes to controlling costs. You know, we talk about the budget issues around the state. Southern Illinois hit particularly hard. A lot of these smaller communities uh, operate on, on very tight budgets. So talk about cost in terms of, of holding this office. Sure. Uh, a judge predominantly doesn't have the ability to do much about setting fees and the things like that. Mm -hmm. Access to the courts is an extremely important thing, and nobody wants 
the inability to come before a judge because of costs. One thing a judge can do to help cut costs is using the mediation process. And that has been something that has been occurring over a period of, a, a period of time. Some cases a judge may appoint you know, an impartial individual to act as a mediator for these individuals and then resolve their case without having to hire an attorney or spend the cost of going through a legal battle that might last for a long period of time. How does uh, economics affect the judicial system, do you think? It does affect the ability for an individual to reach the court system. Mm -hmm. It costs money to file your paperwork. Um, there is a need for access, equal access, for the court systems. And what a court can do in certain circumstances, they will listen to an individual and uh, allow them to file an application to excuse some of those costs so that they might be able to file their paperwork in court and be excused. Economics, unfortunately, is a very, very important aspect of what determines your access to court. Very well. And so talk to me also about your temperament. What kind of personality would you bring to the bench? You know, I, I think I'm friendly and I think I'm firm. Um, my experience in life, I, I was a debater in college mm -hmm. at SIU. I had to debate both sides, so I understand that both sides has a need to express their opinions. Um, I think that I'm open to communications, new ideas, individuals who might want to present something to the court that's unique and novel. But at the same time, I think I, I'm firm, be able to control things to keep things from out of hand. Sometimes tempers flare in the courtroom and you have to make sure that it's going to be orderly so that both sides have an opportunity to speak. I think that I've demonstrated that in my legal career for the last 29 years. So you are being elected to a judicial seat. So how do you keep politics out of the system even though you have to select a party affiliation? A judge has to operate under certain rules. A judge is not supposed to listen to an individual only because they're of a certain political affiliation, certain race, because of their uh, ethnic background or any of those things. Um, I believe all of the candidates are able to do that and understand that that is something that is necessary. Everybody wants to make sure that they have a fair shake when they've become in front of a judge. Mm -hmm. And what is your view on uh, cameras being in the courtroom? I know that it's, it's become an issue. It's, it's happened uh, around southern Illinois especially. Um, what, what's your view on all that? Most of the court cases are already open to the general public. Now there are a few cases that that's not true, such as a juvenile case. I think that a camera in a courtroom opens up, you know, accessibility, accountability, uh, and individuals who might not be able to go to the courtroom might become a little bit more informed about the legal process and maybe not fear it as much. So I, I believe that it wouldn't be a bad thing. I think it would be a good thing. And there is uh, the Judicial Advisory Poll, which is made up of colleagues and, and peers uh, in the legal world. Um, both you and your opponent come as recommended candidates for this. What kind of credence, what do you, what do you view, how do you view this specific report? Well, the poll isn't a representation of all attorneys or mm -hmm. all judges. Not everybody gets it. Um, but it is a view of a lot of our colleagues. Um, I think that you, I've had several of those polls taken of me in the past, and uh, they have varied. I've been recommended, uh, but uh, different points, it just doesn't matter. I think what's really important, what's important for Williamson County is having somebody that has the experience, not learning on the job, but having the ability to be able to make a decision while they're on the bench. How important is it, do you think, for people to get out? Because, you know, we talk a lot about voter turnout, especially during primaries. You don't see a big voter turnout. Uh, I guess it's expected this year there will be a, a larger turnout because it is a governor's race um, and there are so many judgeships that are up for grabs. So how important is it for the voter to get out? We always emphasize president and, and governor, as I mentioned, but on the local level, you know, these judges especially, voices need to be heard from, from the public. So talk to me about the importance of getting out and voting. This is going to be very important. This is unique. There, in Williamson County alone, there are four potential judges that you will be able to vote for 
There's also going to be an appellate court judge that you can vote for. These individuals impact people on a daily basis. It affects their lives. Being informed about the particular candidate, in my opinion, is very important. It needs to be a selection of an individual, not just because of politics, mm -hmm. uh, not just because of anything else other than their ability to be able to perform fairly, honestly, and be able to do so with experience and education. Because this is an elected position, and we talked about having to make that party affiliation, do you worry as a candidate that because of the affiliation that you've had that hurts or hinders a, a candidate's chances in, in, a, in a position that is not necessarily governed by politics? I don't think so. In Southern Illinois, most individuals share common beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Each one of us had to choose a particular political party. But in reality, um, a lot of us share common ideas, common thoughts, and common ethics. Mm -hmm. uh, being informed about the individual is what's more important. Um, I wish that it wasn't partisan, but that's the way it is right now, and yeah. I try not to act that way. Um, I try to be fair to everybody. All righty. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add or let our viewers know about before Election Day? I just would appreciate them becoming educated and taking this opportunity to vote. Um, and I thank you very much, Kevin, for having me here. Absolutely. Steve Green, thank you so much for joining us for this segment today.